I rashly promised that I would make a video step-by-step -step guide for making my honey and almond cake. I've actually forgotten who I promised it to at the moment. I'm going to try it in one take, but I hope there's enough storage on the iPad to do it. There's plenty of room for bloopers, cock-ups and mistakes, um, but let's have a try. So to make this we need, first of all, five ounces of ground almonds, five ounces of plain flour and one level teaspoon of baking powder. We also need three large eggs. These are very fresh, they're from World of All Farm. Three tablespoons of milk. I only ever use skimmed milk. It doesn't matter what kind of milk you use. So, uh, three ounces, sorry, six ounces of butter at room temperature, or in this case I'm using stalk because uh, I haven't got enough butter in. And with that we have three ounces of caster sugar and three ounces of clear honey. In the cake we also need five ounces of glacé cherries. And when we've completed the cake mixture we will need to put it into a nine inch tin. This is a loose bottom tin, it's a very very old one, it's very strong, it's very good. And I'm afraid I'm lazy when it comes to lining tins these days and I buy those nice big sort of oversized bun tin liners. But of course grease with paper, baking parchment etc is absolutely fine. When we've put the mixture in the tin we will sprinkle over the top of it about two teaspoons of little sugar nibs. Actually there's nothing wrong with just using ordinary granulated sugar, um, but I've quite recently discovered the joys of these sugar nibs on lots of different kinds of cake, and I actually think they work quite well. So granulated sugar is fine, and you'd want at most a tablespoon of that if you were using granulated. When the cake is cooked, and whilst it's still hot from the oven, we will need to add the decoration. And the decoration is made using a little more clear honey, some flaked almonds, and some more glacé cherries, and I use multi-coloured ones just to make it look a bit different. And I'll show you how much of those to use very shortly. In terms of equipment, you need a mixing bowl and a fork or a hand whisk, or I couldn't really live without my trusty 1979 Kenwood A901E mixer. And to make the cake in that, you can use the ordinary K beater, that's absolutely fine. But I'm a bit devoted now to these flexi beaters, which really scrape the side of the bowl as they're going round. So I shall use that. And to finally finish off when we put the cherries in, I shall be using the folding tool. But of course, just turning the mixer off and using a spatula or fork to fold in the cherries at the end is absolutely fine. If you're doing it by hand, that's how you'll do it. Okay, so first of all, into your mixing bowl, or in my case the Kenwood Chef bowl, goes the fat, the sugar and the honey. I'm trying to do this one-handed, might be interesting. I normally have the splash guard on the mix mixer, I'll take it off so that you can see what's happening. If you're doing it in a bowl or if your mixer hasn't got a splash guard, don't worry, because actually there shouldn't be any splashes from this anyway. So we're going to cream these until they're very, very light and well mixed and quite pale. before I turned it on but I showed you at the end there when I moved across the control I was doing that on speed one it doesn't need to be very fast or vigorous to do this and hopefully you can see in there that we've got a very very nice light smooth consistency mixture and so now I'm going to beat together in my glass jug here the eggs and the three tablespoons of milk I shall pause the camera and beat those together, otherwise I can't possibly do it holding the iPad in one hand while I'm doing it. And once they're beaten together, 
we will add to the, the Kenwood whilst it's running alternately a splash of the egg and milk mixture and a bit of the almonds which I'm now combining with the flour and the baking powder and so what I do when I'm mixing this or what you need to do when you're mixing this is to use up all of the egg and milk mixture and all but about one or maybe two tablespoons of the flour and almond and baking powder mixture adding them alternately to the bowl. The reason we don't use the very last of the flour mixture is because before we put the cherries in we're going to actually tip those into the very last bit of flour mixture to coat them so they don't stick to each other when we fold them into the mixture. So I shall pause now, beat together the eggs and the milk and then I will resume filming showing you what's happening as I'm putting those into the mixture if I can manage that with one hand. So let's see how we cope with this. You won't be able to hear me talk properly when the mix is on anyway. So I will simply start the mixer, begin to add the ingredients alternately, pause the camera and then resume just as I'm putting the last of it in and turn the mixer off so that you can see what the mixture should look like. So here we go. So there we are, we've now added all of the egg and milk, all but a very small amount, one and a half tablespoons of the dry ingredients and again I forgot to say what speed I was using until I turned it on but I did just quickly move over to the control and hopefully you saw it was speed one um, or of course you can be doing this by hand and hopefully the mixture shouldn't curdle can't really tell whether this has or not on the camera picture. I'm fairly confident looking in the bowl it hasn't. Um, and adding the alternate wet and dry ingredients should prevent any curdling. So now I'm going to add the cherries to this last little bit of flour. And I shall simply, as the best cookbooks say, toss the cherries in the flour, in other words, stir them with the spoon. Um, I'll do that a bit more when I've got both hands to hold the bowl still. And I'm going to um, take out the flexi beater from the mixer. I shall do that without the camera running because I need both hands to scrape with the spatula to get the mixture off it. And I'll fix the um, folding tool and then we'll fold in the cherries. So here we've got the folding tool fitted to the mixer. And I'm just going to switch on to the lowest possible speed. I'm going to tell you this time. And then I'm just going to tip in the cherries and the last tiny bit of flour and it'll only take a matter of seconds to fold those in. I'm sorry, I keep ending up with the uh, iPad swinging around you end up getting a view of the door mat. that's because I keep trying to look round the iPad to the bowl and moving it as I go. So there we are, there's the completely mixed cake mixture now and I shall need both hands to scrape it off the folding tool and tip it from the bowl into prepared tin so what I shall do now is deal with that and then just show you what it looks like in the tin and lastly sprinkle over the sugar mix. So here's the cake mixture into the prepared tin then it's a really very loose mixture, and that's quite correct. And I've smoothed the back down a little bit with the spatula. And I'm just going to sprinkle on the sugar nibs as evenly as I possibly can over the cake. I might not need all of these actually. Well, they'll go in anyway. It'll just be a bit generous. And after all, I am going to give this particular one to Irene as her birthday cake, so since it's for a birthday, she can have the extra 
sugar. There we go. So sprinkled over the sugar nibs as evenly as I can over the cake top. And uh, now we simply need to put that in the oven. Now I've already got another one of these in the oven from earlier on. Um, and I, I, so I shan't get in this one straight away because the other one's already part cooked. And it needs to go in for approximately one hour. I find after an hour the top is usually looking pretty done in terms of colour and it's nice and even and flat but if you leave it for about an hour and ten minutes I think you'll find that when you put a skewer or a sharp knife in the middle to test if it's finished I think you'll find that actually it comes out clean then but test it after an hour and don't be surprised if it's not quite done through the centre and leave it a little longer. Now as for the topping which I promised to show you I use my little uh, copper saucepan for this but it doesn't matter, you don't need a fancy pan, you don't need anything exciting at all. What you need is something that you can either put over a very low gas flame or that you can put into uh, a warming oven or in my case I put it in the grill compartment of the cooker above the oven. I don't like the grill, it's just got the oven's residual heat there. And the only reason you need to have it heat proof is because you're going to put some honey in which you want to become completely liquid. So I can't do this with uh, with one hand because I've got these big Kilner jars with my almonds and, and cherries in. But what I need to do is to weigh into my vessel, whatever I'm doing, um, three ounces of glacé cherries, two ounces of flaked almonds, so three of cherries, two of almonds, and then put in one tablespoon of honey. And I always put the honey in last on top because the idea is that we're going to warm it and stir them very gently after they've warmed so that the cherries and the almonds are completely coated in the honey. And the only reason we're doing that is because when we put them on the cake when it comes out of the oven, and we do it as soon as it comes out of the oven while it's hot, we tip the topping onto the cake and we spread it around a little bit to get a, a nice rustic appearance. Hopefully you've seen the photograph um, on the recipe already on my website and the honey simply glues the almonds and the cherries together. They don't glue it to the cake, they glue it to each other so that when you've got them piled up looking really generous a sort of cornucopia of fruit nuts on top, um, they don't all fall off and roll away as soon as you touch the cake or begin to cut it. And here is the list of ingredients that you need to use. You can, in fact, replace the caster sugar with more honey and that will work fine, but you will need to cook the cake for a little longer, perhaps about another 15 minutes, and you will need to wait for it to cool very slightly before you start to put the decoration on, as it will make a very, very light cake.